Hello YouTube viewers, welcome to my channel Science to Technology. In today's show, Future Friday, we're gonna talk about seawater mining. So let's dive right into it. Now, what is the problem that we have to look into water of the sea or the ocean to mine it? Well, problem is land mines are running out. Basically, once we start mining something, we can get a very good idea is like how big this patch is, how much material we can extract. And all the data is pointing to one clear direction that is we are running out of it second every country does not have it for example most of the world's lithium is in chile and then in china now what happens to every other country they are like lol so that's a very big issue from national safety point of view from national uh, prosperity point of view so that is a very dangerous thing then we come to another aspect it creates a very polluted land for example many mining processes are not very clean and like in the early days as in like uh, 1800s and 1900s nobody even thought about that so it polluted an insane amount of land basically large amount of land patch has been polluted simply because of mining and when it comes to co2 footprint basically let's say to make a battery that is like let's say one kilowatt hour how much co2 we have to put into the atmosphere that is insane and uh, for this reason many people uh, like who do not think in far term generally say we should not use uh, electric vehicles simply because it has a lot of you know environmental consequences while they are 100 percent wrong simply because even with co combining all this their footprint is still 10 to 20 percent lower now if the world is dying and giving it 10 to 20 percent extra time is worth it and on top of that why these things are so polluting so messy so unorganized so unregulated well there was no demand for it like lithium in back in the day was very cheap now you're like wait a minute then why the heck everybody is complaining about lithium like you know being so expensive it became expensive when you started to extract too much out of it for example if the mine was designed to let's say make one ton a day and now you're expecting it to make one ton per hour now it's like what the hell so you get that point because of the there is imbalance in supply and demand that's why lithium prices are so high and then you might be like okay what benefit will we have if we started to utilize seawater or uh, ocean water well seawater or ocean water has more than enough of it for example like best estimate on land will barely give you like you know a million ton or billion ton or oh, seawater is like few trillion tons so you do not even have to worry about it consequence yes the concentration is very low but it has more than enough of it you just have to figure out how to extract it now we have many ways of extracting it primary or the oldest way is sun based what does that mean that simply means how uh, exactly how our lithium is mined right now is basically in huge ponds in chile like this so and these are huge surfaces basically uh, size of a city these are not meter, uh, measured in meters they are measured in kilometers basically each pool will be like yeah few kilometer across so you get the point like giant amount of surface area has to be uh, consumed for this and what we call this is basically brine evaporation pool so basically you will drill down and you will do uh, land survey and figure out like is there salts here specifically lithium salts if you are mining for lithium potassium if you are mining for that whatever have you so you're gonna drill down you're gonna mine that area and how you're gonna mine it basically you pump gg amounts of water i mean insanely large amount of water and then you're gonna pump it out into this system so clean water went in now that salt is dissolved into that water and that water is now left into these ponds it will evaporate now you have to understand this this is being done in a desert so that fundamentally the water that is being used is permanently lost so insane amount of water cost goes into this that's another aspect like the amount of water that is consumed here is gg then it takes two years up to uh, like up to two years to dry out so it's not something like oh you let it there and then like you know wait for one week and then you're gonna scrape the salts no wait for two years so basically they will fill this pond in march april may june july august september october november december january february march april may june july august september october november and then it's like by the time they are done filling this one okay now it time start to mine here so you get that point it is very slow very consuming in terms of uh, resources and idiotically land intensive like not every place has this kind of land luxury and not to mention uh, even deserts have rain issues so uh, finding places where you're like okay i'm gonna you know have this pond that's never gonna rain it might only need to rain one day and you will be like lol so fundamentally speaking only few places can do that however there are some places for example in case of india some places in gujarat and rajasthan can be utilized in that way the land is very uh, unirrigable there is no major city so land cost is low enough where if you start to do what we call uh, sea water desalination it will justify the cost of the water and you will have to evaporate brine water which you do not want to pump back into the sea for ecolog ecological reasons so many people are trying to look into that so this is step one again if you have no advanced technology this is one of the simplest option you can utilize but does have the consequence of slow rate of production and requiring insanely large amount of land and you have to make sure there is no rain then we come to electrolysis kind of systems now this is gen 2 options uh, basically you have to understand that nature never has metal 
It's not like lol, magnesium, lol, aluminium. There is no scenario like that. You always mine something that is mixed with something else. That, that's the only reason it will be stable. Most material generally oxidize. Now it could oxidize with uh, like you know hydroxide scenario. It could be just raw oxide or it could mix with some other elements to reach into a stable state. So you will always find things that are mixed with something else. So extract something, electrolysis is a system that is utilized to create pure materials and it has been done uh, like for last 50 60 years or even 100 years for many metals like many metals like copper is exactly made utilizing this method so it we call electro uh, refining and electro deposition so this sort of system basically you are still uh, electrolyzing the water but instead of water splitting into hydrogen and oxygen you're splitting whatever is mixing to it uh, you can extract chlorine out of it that's how we get most of the chlorine so these are the system and you generally figure out things three things specifically voltage how is the potential difference electrodes basically which material error that will attract or uh, detract some other elements and then membrane now membrane is the interesting part if your country or company can design a good membrane you can have a scenario where you selectively only let one type of ion through for example llto membranes that are being used now it only allows lithium ion to transport so you can have a c that is diluted with everything for example sodium potassium or whatever have you but only lithium will be collected in your system which you can understand makes it very profitable however be very mindful the concentration is still very low but it does allow to uh, make some real progress so this i provided the video down below of this uh, korean south korean researchers they figured out the nation has a like very great uh, requirement from the outside world so right now they are barely producing five percent of their requirement and their aim is by the next 2020 as in like just uh, recently they should reach a point where they are like you know 10 percent self-dependent and then slowly they will increase it to 100 percent so they are uh, mining seawater directly this is a real system they have built it and it's like of course it's a small scale not a like you know mass production system but it is a working system they are f actually using in real life and uh, based on few years of detail uh, data they will collect in upcoming years they are planning to make a full scale where it's like full-fledged mine for profit it will take time but uh, they are making some good progress and they have managed to extract five kilogram uh, i am saying five kilo, one kilogram in five days so that may sound very less for uh, you know terrestrial mindset but you have to know that's from seawater and seawater is never gonna run out tangibly speaking it's not gonna run out so fundamentally that's a very good start and india can also do that and many countries can do that who have access to sea but does not have landlocked resources where they have like you know lithium and all that jazz so that's a very good uh, progress this is option number two and again we already do this it's just like uh, what if we tune the membrane to get more things out of it now the lithium demand is high enough where this sort of things can be justified then we come to third option bio leaching now bio leaching is basically my, uh, you are utilizing microbes to do your bidding rather than having some electro process or something like that you will let microbes take care of the situation now many minerals basically when we do mining process they have a lot of junk ma material out of and those are very toxic because if you increase the basically metal concentration in a water you can make it acidic you can make it flat out lethal for organization flat out like flat out this water touches the river river dies this water touches the forest for it dies and that has happened there is more than enough ecological disaster from mining wastage so people started to figure out it's like looking into it studying it there wait a minute there are microbes into this how the heck microbe is surviving in this there are microbes that utilize this as a fuel source so they can literally take something that is like very contaminated and then change digest they, they will break it down into some things that we can extract now so of course it still takes a lot of research and development but sometimes we have figured out it's like how the heck we can make it so that it creates a giant compound breaks it down into solid water soluble oxide so that water soluble oxide you send it to other processes and then you extract it so we have figured it out it's already been done and surprisingly large amount of gold in this world is manufactured by this kind of process so it is something that is really like uh, in real life is being utilized at this point in time of course like you have to uh, fine tune it for seawater because again salinity is an issue and then another aspect would be there like uh, concentration may be too high for it so a lot of people are working in it, but it does work. We just have to fine tune it for seawater use. And then we come to another aspect that is uh, using microbes as a collecting agent. Basically, microbes, when they do uh, what we call basically their metabolism, they could create a charge, surface charge, so to say. And because metal dissolved in water generally have ionic state, they get attracted to each other and they can create clumps like this. And this clump can easily sink down to the bottom. So what you have is basically you have giant water desalination plant and that brine water, which is super duper dense, super uh, toxic to even the sea, because it has such a high salt concentration you let this microbe digest it so to say so all he's gonna do is clump all the salts and drop it down you can scrape it up 
process it now per ton uh, mineral output is much higher so basically if you take soil you take one ton of soil you do not get like you know one ton of lithium out of it there is no mine that has that kind of efficiency or efficiency is like physically impossible so you will generally mine one ton and you'll barely get 100 ton. this has much higher uh, concentration than that so that's why like uh, basically rather than wasting the water you literally have pure water so you're gonna have water fresh water that is coming from RO plant that is going to your city awesome then uh, brine water that is directly being digested by these microbes they will remove the salts and lot of materials out of it and that water will be good enough not for human consumption but good enough for micro uh, basically micro organism consumption so basically you can create a forest out of that while you have removing precious metals out of it so that's the uh, another tool that we have to utilize this system so what we can expect in the future well reality is we are running out of water the only way we can provide enough water for enough people is desalination now desalination is profitable enough at this point in time simply because water is high demand basically there will no never be a society is like i'm not gonna pay for the water if it's this expensive you can do that with petrol you can't do that with water so there is a incentive there now again if imagine it this way let's say you are a country like india and you're building a giant uh, desalination ro plant and you have again you paid for this you have a giant pumping station you already have a brine which has a much higher salt concentration what if you are like rather than like you know increasing the water price what if you try to extract value out of that brine which has already higher concentration of salt compared to anything else you use microbe you use sun whatever whatever you have you utilize that to mine materials out of it that can make it double profit uh, system now ideally any green technology is only sustainable if it's profitable nobody's gonna do that it's like oh do this for it saves the environment nobody cares it's like you do this it will make you rich everybody will do that so you want to reach that point and water desalination is a imminent requirement it's not something oh we might have we might escape no 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 we're gonna do that so might as well make it double profit and Technology at this point in time is just taking root because that uh, South Korean system. I looked up uh, uh, earliest data point on that that I found it was in 2011, and now they are making small scale prototypes in real world. So I can easily expect it to take another five to ten years before there is first mine that is actually doing this. But any country that is spending on this right now will be rich tomorrow because again you have to do hundreds of research hundreds of options fifty thousands of uh, collaboration and system and all that jazz only some will work but you have to do that only then once you have cracked it you're gonna be swimming in money so and all the system the three systems that i specified all are already in use it's not like you know completely out of the realm of science it's science is like go engineering we are already using go economics that's the only part where you have to match the supply and demand so i can see a lot of good potential in the future because of this technology sea water mining directly so this was my presentation on basically mining the uh, water of the ocean directly hopefully you have liked it learn from it in that case please click the like button share it amongst your friends that will help me a lot if you didn't like it didn't enjoy it i urge you to press dislike press it twice to show me extra disappointment please leave a comment because i do try to reply to all of them subscribe press the bell icon if you're free and as always thanks for watching